In this video, I'll be showing you how to import a video, how to work over the top of it to essentially trace the action and create what we call a rotoscoping animation. The definition of rotoscoping is on your screen now, and this is um, an acceptable and engaging form of animation. It's easy to do, it requires no animation principles, it just requires a good eye and a steady hand. The best way to do rotoscoping is to plug in a graphics tablet. We have graphic tablets at school that you can loan from the library and also larger graphics tablets that are available through the arts department. If you were to purchase your own graphics tablet, the cost would vary from $200 upwards to over a thousand, depending on what you're looking for and how large the space of the tablet is for drawing. So let's get started. The first thing we'll be doing is going into our file import and import video. Now the import video dialog is different to any other kind of import process. So we're going to go to our computer and browse to this skateboard FLV file. Now you'll notice that this is an FLV and unfortunately only FLV movie files are supported when you are importing videos directly into Flash. So you'll need to find software to convert to FLV if the original file format is not in FLV. So we've loaded the file and now we're going to embed the FLV into and play it in the timeline. When we click on next, we'll get our final set of options which is asking us do we want to place it on the stage, expand the timeline and include audio and we'll be saying yes to all of that. So we've now imported the video. As you can see, it's centered on the stage and if I scrub across our timeline, you'll see the video itself there. Now this occurs in one instance on layer one, just like any other asset that we would load. And Flash has expanded the timeline, as you can see, to go right through to the end of this video. The video itself is one minute long. And as you can understand, if we're doing 24 frames per second, then the actual number of frames will be significant. I would recommend that you actually edit and cut down your video before you import it so that you only have the section that you need to rotoscope in Flash. And around about frame 1770 is where we're going to start our rotoscoping. But I want to enlarge the size of the video. So we're going to go to our free transform tool, click on the video, hold down shift and enlarge the scale of that asset as you can see. This hasn't changed the file, it's just made it a little bit more pixelated because it's enlarged and this will allow us to rotoscope it more successfully. Now another thing to do when you're rotoscoping is to try to increase the stage space as much as possible and this will give you a larger area to draw out the curves and to get the detail in there that you want. Now I'm going to lock my video layer and I'm going to create a new layer and starting at frame 1765, I'm going to click in layer 2 and insert a keyframe. F6 is our shortcut, as you know. Also, I'm going to call this rotoscope to help me identify what the layers mean in the timeline. So what we need to do now is using our graphics tablet, get our brush or our pencil. The brush is much smoother though. And simply sketch over the action that we're trying to capture. Now I'll do this very rapidly. And if you had more time, you'll do a better job. But I just want to show you the basic principle of rotoscoping. 
Of course, the larger the action, the better the outcome. In this case, we've got a guy on a skateboard about to do a, a heel flip. And I just want to capture the way that the board spins. So for this to work, I simply need the outline of the, of the guy on the skateboard, the wheels, and I might even include, just to give it more of a sketched quality, the, the horizon line or the concrete line bef behind him. I'm now going to turn off the video layer so we can see how our sketch is coming along. As you can see, it's quite rough, but that's okay. And I'm now going to speed up this tutorial as I go ahead. And on twos, I'm going to simply trace over the video action.
Yeah, thank you. As you can see, you can go backwards and forwards. In one instance, I added a keyframe on ones, but since then I've kept it to twos. So if we now turn off our video layer, you can see the result.